By now you probably know the story of Wilhelm Röntgen discovering x-rays in 1895 while he was experimenting with a Crookes tube like this one seen here. But did you know that even though in 1895 he discovered x-rays at the time they didn't even know what type of beam this was? In fact they would only discover what electrons were in 1897, two years after Röntgen discovered x-rays. Nevertheless, Röntgen's experimentation and his observation that a phosphor plate was growing nearby led him to discover that he could create image with this new source of radiation, what he would call x-rays. These are just high energy waves on the electromagnetic spectrum, which is a rainbow of energy from low frequency wave to high frequency waves. So this includes everything from radio waves to microwaves, infrared. You see the small strip right here is all that we can see as visible light. So the ability to master the utilization of this radiation spectrum has proven extremely useful. And so one big difference you'll notice is that X-rays and gamma rays and above are ionizing radiation. That means that they have enough energy that they can knock electrons loose from atoms and that poses risk to living tissues. That's what causes biological damage. And so you may notice that everything out here I've said is high energy. They also contain very small wavelengths. As you may remember, wavelength and energy are inversely related. The astute observer may have recognized that x-rays and gamma rays overlap in wavelength. And so what gives? If you have a wave of this wavelength, how do you tell if it's an x-ray or a gamma ray? And the difference is in their origin. X-rays come from electron collisions in tubes like in the Crookes tube. The X-ray tubes are basically Crookes tubes. While gamma rays are something that is emitted from unstable radioactive nuclei. Here's a fun fact for you. In the early 1900s, X-ray machines were everywhere. Here we see they were even used in shoe stores to check for shoe sizes. That, of course, was before we learned about the ionization risks of X-ray radiation. All right, facts you should understand about X-rays. They're part of the electromagnetic radiation spectrum. And on that spectrum, they're on the high energy, very short wavelength end of the spectrum. They can be described as waves or particles. As particles, we call them photons, an individual packet of a light wave. So any type of electromagnetic radiation you can talk of as being in photons. They're invisible. They have no mass. They have no charge. They travel at the speed of light. They travel in a straight line. As they leave a source, they'll diverge outward from that source. That's important in radiology. They're able to penetrate through tissues deeper than visible light. This is why we can get an image of teeth and bones. They do have the ability to ionize tissues, and that's what makes them dangerous. They can also interact with dental receptors, and that generates the beautiful images that show your smile. Although there is potential risk from x-ray radiation, thanks to advancements over a century of use, doses have been greatly reduced, which reduces risk to the patients. They also safely uncover hidden diseases, whether dental diseases or other, which means their diagnostic capability far outweighs the risk to patients.